Salina High Bank Speedway, we got them racked, we got them stacked, and we've got the grandstands packed. Let's go racing off at turn number four. We are green. James McFadden out to the early race lead. Brad Sweet tries to run the bottom. They did move those tractor tires in right before this feature event rolled off. Sweet looks for a big slider to turns three and four, comes up short, and James McFadden will lead lap number one. McFadden leads his, leads his first lap of the Kubota Highland Racing 2024 season in the Roth Enterprises number 83 car. Sweet runs in second. Third spot is Abreu. Fourth is Marks and fifth is Brian Brown. Traffic going to come up in a hurry here in this feature event. James McFadden can already see the back of the field here on the high banks in Salina, Oklahoma. Brad Sweet just trying to maintain the pace of the 83 car until he gets to the back of the field. Most drivers finding a home around the top side of the racetrack here. Couple towards the middle of the field running down low, including Zeb Wise, Brennan Crouch, Parker Price, Miller, and Jacob Allen. There is Zeb Wise, and now there is James McFadden. Now about to be on the same straightaway as the back of the field. The first car he will encounter is the 52 of Blake Hahn. Traffic will certainly be the determining factor in who wins this race here tonight. Brad Sweet closing in maybe just slightly right there off of turn number four. That time by Sweet about a tenth faster as far as the lap times go. Brad Sweet the winner the last time four tenths race at Salina High Banks in 2018 with the Outlaws. Looks down to the inside turns three and four. Sweet might have found something on the bottom right there that time by. The last time by, it was actually McFadden now with the fastest lap of the top two, but Rico in third was faster than both of your top two drivers. Abreu and Marks closing in on McFadden and Sweet. Traffic up the road now. Chase Park now the first car that McFadden will encounter. Here comes Brad Sweet off the bottom. The bottom of the racetrack in turn number two looks to be pretty good. McFadden now hits the deck and turns three and four, tries to hit the inside of the racetrack, and he does. McFadden now trying to size up your lap cars here, see what he can do. Goes to the bottom and one and two, opens up the top lane. Here comes Brad Sweet. He takes the lead down the back straightaway. Brad Sweet takes the lead on lap number nine. And here comes Abreu now. Abreu looking underneath the McFadden for P2. James McFadden now coming back after the 49 car, back into turn number one. Sweet runs the bottom. He gets loose right there. McFadden with a run down the back stretch, back to the outside of the Napa Auto Parts 49. Brad Sweet up the racetrack, McFadden crosses him up, and McFadden takes the lead back across the line. James McFadden back to the top spot, hits the bottom real nice right there in one and two, and pulls away a little bit from Brad Sweet. What a corner right there from McFadden. Now Sweet, he gets into him, they get together. McFadden flips out of the ballpark in turn four. The wing flies off, and he is out there in the cow pasture. James McFadden, after contact with Brad Sweet, has flown off the racetrack, and McFadden is climbing out of the race car, and that is a great sign to see as James McFadden has climbed from the Roth Enterprises number 83 car and is talking to safety officials outside the racetrack in turn number four. The former teammates with Casey Kane Racing with Mike Curb get together racing for the top spot in turns three and four and mcfadden is taking a seat right there on the banking outside the fourth corner you see high limit racing officials are speaking with him and there is what is left of that roth enterprises number 83 car and his stretch of top tens in a row will come to an end here tonight at salina high bank speedway we just hope that mcfadden is okay we did see him climb from the car So now the safety officials will have to work to get that car up off the ground and get him back to the trailer. So with 10 laps in and 20 to go, your race leader will be Brad Sweet in car number 49. And Tony Laporta, we got an update for us down there? Yeah, thankfully I've got James, James McFadden right by me. James, first of all, are you okay? Yeah, I might, uh that was a digger. I, had, uh, I thought it was over, and and then I uh, hit the ground three or four more times. So uh, not ideal, but you know, luckily we got really good safety gear. And yeah, I, I don't know. I just race and deal, I guess. I, I, don't, I don't really know. So it all happens pretty quick. And um, yeah, I don't know if I crowded him or he got a big run or something. I just we'll see. Um, but. Everyone back home, Zoe, Mav, I'm all good. We'll uh, live to fight another day.
That is the best news possible, James. Thank you for talking to us. He was your pole sitter after winning the FK Rod Ends Dash. And I don't know if Nate can show you guys, but Chase, this car, I mean, I don't know how to say without over-exaggerating, but it's every bit of 50 yards off the top of the racetrack over here. I mean, James McFadden absolutely flew off the top of this racetrack, but he is up, he is out, he is walking back, and according to him, he is okay. Yeah, that car flew in the air for a long time before it actually touched the ground when he left the surface over there in turn number four. We're going to see a replay here uh, from Flow Racing. We'll see what exactly happened here. McFadden with the lead. Here comes Sweet with a run to the inside. So McFadden, I mean, just trying to run the middle there, and maybe Brad kind of missed the bottom a little bit, but you see what I'm talking about. When McFadden leaves the track, it takes, I mean, what seems like an eternity for him to hit the ground again just because of the unbelievable amount of banking that there is here at Salina High Bank Speedway. When he cleared that, uh, it went for a long time until he actually landed. There you see McFadden, uh, as he said, he's all right. He's walking back to the trailer. Unfortunately for uh, McFadden, his, his wife and child not here in the States right now. They are back home in Australia, and uh, they are definitely watching tonight on Flow Racing, so he let them know that he is okay. There's Brent Ventura, the crew chief on the car. They've got some work to do before we come back to action Tuesday at Riverside International Speedway in West Memphis, Arkansas. So with 10 laps complete, uh, Brad Sweet is the race leader, followed by Rico Abreu in second. Brent Marks runs in third. Fourth is the 21 of Brian Brown, and fifth is the 13 of Justin Peck. Sixth, how about this? Tanner Holmes up to the sixth position in car number 18T. Seventh is Zeb Wise. Eighth is Jacob Allen, and ninth is Casey Kane. Tenth is Cy Lynch. The Durst Dice Roll drivers lost a couple positions here on the opening laps of this race. Tony, you got more for us down there? Yeah, walking back, actually, Nate, our wireless camera operator, caught a look at the 18T's uh, nose wing, Tanner Holmes, and he asked me, he goes, does that look bent to you? And we came over to get a closer look, and yes, in fact, it does look uh, bent. Not the nose wing itself, actually the mounting bracket down that runs into the frame. Uh, not broken, at least not from the vantage point I had, but he, uh, Tanner actually was able to explain it to us. He said he just was trying to slow down as quick as he could and actually got in to the back of Justin Peck, who he was part next to there during the red flag so i do not believe that mounting bracket is broken but it is skewed back quite a bit it's that left side mounting bracket chase so the nose wing on the 18t of tanner holmes cocked just a bit back and to the side on the left end well, we'll see if that nose wing can hang on for the rest of this race. Obviously, they are going very, very fast around here, so that downforce with it being twisted like that might ruin it. We'll see what happens. Another different replay from the infield in turn number three. This should be a good look at it here. And you will just see McFadden leave stage left. Bye-bye. He's gone. Uh, he just leaves the screen right there and just goes over the side of the racetrack. And it looks like Sweet does get tight right there. You can see him kind of maybe turn the wheel straight, maybe a little bit left. And he notices that he is going to get into McFadden as he tried to hit the bottom and maybe just kind of misjudged it a little bit there. You could tell that he was turning the wheel back to the left before he got into the side of him. So we'll have to see what drivers say, whether, you know, Sweet in, in on the podium tonight, if he finishes on the podium, I'm sure he'll talk about it. And we'll see if McFadden has anything else to say here later on. But uh, luckily he is okay. And we've got all the cars refired. Now eyes are turned to the, or the eyes, Attention turns to the number 18T of Tanner Holmes. We'll see if that nose wing can stay on. Tony, you know as well as I do, it's been a tough start to the season for Tanner Holmes, and he's having a great run here tonight in the sixth position. And I would hate to see a run like this be ruined by a nose wing problem like that that happened under the red flag. Well, Chase, you're absolutely right uh, on all fronts. Tanner has had kind of a tough start to the season with us here uh, at Kubota High Limit Racing. He is one of the drivers, Tanner Holmes, uh, we're talking about. He is one of the drivers that I stopped and talked to in the pit area while they were doing the track work. And I asked him, I said, what do you think of this place? I've heard it's fast. And he goes, oh, it's easily, easily the fastest I've ever been. So when you talked earlier about hoping that nose wing can stay on due to the high speed and force through the corners these cars are feeling a lot of aero dependency comes when you have the nose wing the top wing on all that air shoving down on that nose wing on the front of the 18t could really wreak havoc on the handling of that race car so it will be very interesting a like you said to see if the nose wing can stay on and stay where it needs to be and b if it does stay on what that does and how it changes the handling at least on the front end of tanner holmes's number 18t
Yeah, good call there, Tony. We're going to see the frozen farmer pick pint come onto the racetrack this time by. That means that the drivers will have to go to the, either the inside or the outside of that pick pint. Race fans, you see it being run onto the front stretch right now by one of our high limit racing officials, that being Cody Houston down there. And so the drivers will come by, they'll choose inside or outside, and that'll be the line they start in. The bottom of the racetrack actually coming around here. They did move those tractor tires in before this feature event. And so um, that has certainly helped a little bit. I believe the frozen farmer pick pint the banking might be too much. I don't think the pick pint is going to be able to stay up, and so we ran it back into the infield. And so drivers will have to just do normal, uh, you know, pick their lanes normal. Is that right, Tony? Yeah, that's exactly what Kubota High Limit Racing official Cody Houston just told me. He went up there on the front straightaway to try to set up the frozen farmer pick pint, and it just it was it was toppling over every time he tried to get it set up. So that hopefully shows folks a bit of a visual representation as to how banked this place really is even on the straightaways no doubt about it here we go 10 laps complete 20 to go here at salina high bank speedway brad sweet showing the way rico abru now in second abru looking for win number one of 2024 he gets a great restart right there alongside of brad sweet as they work back into turn number one sweet runs the middle gets the cushion on the exit brent marks momentarily takes second from the 24 of Rico Abreu. We'll see if Marks has the bottom wired. It looks like off a of turn number four, and it's very good. He pulls up alongside the 24 car down the front straightaway, cannot make the pass. He might have it this time. They're three wide for the lead off a of turn number two. A three car battle for the top spot here at Salina High Bank Speedway. And Brent Marks, no, he's not gonna have it. Now Rico on the back bumper of Brad Sweet down the front straightaway. Rico works back to the outside. Sweet runs the middle and Marks runs the top. Three different lines of racing as they work one and two. Great race going on for fourth as well between Zeb Wise, Tanner Holmes, and Brian Brown. Brad Sweet now stretching it out a little bit here as Brent Marks and Rico try and settle it amongst themselves for that second position. Marks has it down the back straightaway. Brent Marks up to second. Rico trying to peek back to the inside and turns one and two. Car around and off the track. I believe red flag waving. Yes, I cannot tell. I believe that is Brenham Crouch, the car that is upside down. Yes, that is the case, and he is way out of the racetrack. He is out of the car, ladies and gentlemen. Brenham Crouch is okay. He is walking away from the race car as he has flipped out of the park into turn number one. And safety officials are on the scene over there to make sure that everything is okay with Brenham. You see him take the helmet off right there, but that car definitely looks a little crunched over there. So... A red flag on lap 10, and now a red flag three laps later here on lap number 13. And it sounds like from Kubota High Limit Racing officials that we will go single file restarts for the remainder of this race. Single file restarts for the remainder of this race due to the track conditions. As they continue to work to get Brenham Crouch's car picked up out of that area over there and take him back over to the pits. So Brad Sweet shows the way. Brent Marks now into the second position in car number 19, and he looks extremely good on the very inside of the speedway. Rico Abreu is in third, Brian Brown in fourth, Zeb Wise in fifth, and we talked a lot about Tanner Holmes right before that green flag run, and we were wondering if that was going to affect the handling. I think it almost made him look better right there. He was in fourth for a moment uh, during that battle, so he looks all right. Justin Peck in seventh, Casey Kane is eighth, Jacob Allen in ninth, and then you've got Dominic Selzy. He is in the 10th position. Tyler Courtney, the Kubota High Limit Racing points leader, started back in 21st in this race, and now he is up to the 11th spot in car number 7 BC. Corey Day, the winner of the winner's performance, B-Main, is up to 15th after starting back in 19th. So those two drivers, Tyler Courtney and Corey Day, first and third in points, trying to make their way forward. Sunshine looks pretty solid so far in this one. So getting the number one car picked up off of the racetrack. And Tony, I'm sure you got an update for us down there. Yeah, uh, they're hoisting that number one. You can see from the drone shot over there again how far the car made it off of the racing service. But uh, Brenham Crouch, not with his race car anymore. He got picked up by a member, I believe, of the Crouch Motorsports team. And he caught the quad back to the pit area. So uh, as you said, you saw it on the shot. He was up. He was out of the car. And he's already back to the trailer. So wanted to hear more from him in a little bit. but. Uh, Burnham Crouch back to the trailer early. 
Sounds like we've got a replay coming up here, Tony. We'll see what happened to Brenham Crouch. It's going to be from our drone shot outside of turn number one. So the drone is in, oh, uh, sorry, top left. Or sorry, so the drone, and he's going to go off in turn number one, I believe, this time by right. Oh, I missed. Oh, wow, I was looking at the wrong part of the screen there. I'm kind of kind of confused as to where we were at as far as the drone goes. We'll, we'll take another look at it. I'm sure the people at home uh, probably saw it, but I'm, I'm half blind up here, I guess. I've been looking at my screen too much, a little bright in here, so I must have missed it. But uh, we'll replay it one more time, and, and we'll see what happened to Brenham Crouch. But uh, nonetheless, he is out of this race, out of the car. He is okay, heading back to the trailer. Here is that replay once again. So bottom left, bottom left of your screen right here, and Brenham Crouch... And here he goes. So he just, it looks like he almost forgot to turn or something. I feel like something had to break right there. I mean, I, Brandon Crouch uh, was running pretty decent right there. He was in 13th position. And it, I mean, right there, it just looks like he forgot to turn and flew off the track. I would have to believe that something broke there in the steering and did not allow him to make the corner there. And he goes for a little bit of a ride off the exit there as Parker Price Miller you take a look at him right there he is currently in the 14th position after starting in 11th for this feature the HendrickCars.com pace truck back onto the racetrack drivers will get in behind that Brad Sweet your leader but I think Brett Marks might have something for him here Rico Ebru in third, Brian Brown in fourth, and Zeb Wise in fifth. Tony, it's been kind of weird so far this year, man. I feel like when one driver wins, they seem to win back-to-back. -back. We saw it with Tyler Courtney. We saw it with Corey Day. And we may potentially see it here tonight with Brad Sweet. Yeah, you're right, Chase. It's it's honestly a very interesting trend that I don't think I'd even thought about. But, yeah, Tyler Courtney picks up win number two. Well, sorry, win number one at race number two at East Bay. And then he goes and picks up race number one of the Golden Isle weekends. That's back-to-back. -back. And then you talked about Corey Day getting it done at RPM Speedway for his first career victory with Kubota High Limit Racing. And then he doubles down with Meeker at Red Dirt Raceway to kick off the midweek money series. And Brad Sweet, he looks awful good right now. And I think a lot of that chase has to come down to the fact that when drivers and teams find what works for them, you really see the results change. Brad Sweet, it's taken him a while to find out exactly what he wants in that number 49. But Eric and Ty and the crew over there, Casey Kane Racing on that Nap Auto Parts number 49 car, they have clearly hit on something. Brad must like the way that 49 is driving right now because he's in a great spot to continue that trend of back-to-back -back wins. Tony, it certainly doesn't hurt as well. But Brad Sweet does have quite a bit of experience here at the, Sub or the Salina High Bank Speedway. A couple of World of Outlaw starts, including a victory here in 2018. That was actually the last time the series, the last time the 410 Wings Sprint cars were here at Salina, but that was six years ago. But still, any kind of experience certainly helps. Well, and Chase, remember this too. Brad is a part of one of the very few multi-car teams that come out to Kubota High Limit Racing. His teammate and team owner, Casey Kane, has enjoyed great success as of recently. A couple really strong runs for Casey at Texas Motor Speedway, then again at Meeker, and he looked good last night. So Wayne Pretty and that nine bunch have changed things up to get Casey where he wants to be. So you have to imagine that those crew chiefs and those drivers are putting their heads together Casey can go out there and gain information. Brad's going out there and gaining in information. And it's helping both cars from the Casey Kane Racing Stable get faster and faster each time they go out on the track. Absolutely. And we just saw Dominic Selzy pull off of the racetrack right there. Selzy was running in 10th at the time. And he pulled out in front of the entire field there and drove by and pulled right off of the racetrack. So I'm not sure what's going on with Dominic, but he was having a strong one, Was started 16th, was up to the 10th position so far. A flat left rear tire, I'm being told, on the 41 for Dominic Selzy. And that is going to move Tyler Courtney now into the top 10. So from 20th to 10th right now, a plus 10 for Sunshine. And his march to the front continues. And Tony, he's still got plenty of time, 17 more laps to go. Could we see Sunshine get up there maybe to the top five? Dom, you're talking about Chase? 
Uh, I was talking about Sunshine is, uh, you know, he's up from 20th to 10th, but yeah, Dominic sells the flat left rear, and that promoted the 7BC up into the top 10 with that. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I again I feel bad that I wasn't able to get a chance to talk to uh, Tyler Courtney and his team back in the pit area. But again, they were thrashing trying to get that car ready after the uh, B main ended. So we don't know, you know, kind of what's been plaguing them tonight. Maybe they wouldn't even describe it as something plaguing them. Maybe just getting their arms around a track uh, the configured not like one they see very often during the season. Uh, so, yeah, don't know what the issue with the 7BC has been, but he's in a great position now to do what you have to do if you want to win a championship, and that is salvage good nights when you don't think you can. Tyler Courtney's in a really good spot here to salvage a night that they probably thought was going to start and finish pretty poorly. Absolutely, Tony. You see that cone out on the front stretch right now, race fans. That is not a choose cone that uh, you might normally see at a dirt track race. That is the cone uh, for a single file restart. The drivers cannot pass each other until they get to that cone on the front stretch. Once all 24 cars make it past that cone, we will pull it into the infield and then the race will continue on as normal. So you cannot pass before that cone on the front straightaway. His work continues on the 41 of Dominic Selzy. I was told a flat left rear, but it appears that there might be more damage than that on that car as they are still working. It looks like on the right rear portion, but the push truck is getting to the rear bumper of that car. Kevin Naus right there with the flashlight. That is our technical director with Kubota High Limit Racing, and they will send Dominic Selzy back onto the racetrack. It's a tough break there, man. He was having a great run, 16th to 10th, and now he'll have to try and do it all over again. He'll rejoin at the back of the field. And so that should put Dominic Selzy, I want to say, in 22nd position. That should be right. Dominic Selzy back to P22. So nearly halfway through this race, 13 complete, 17 to go. Brad Sweet, Brent Marks, Rico Abreu, Brian Brown, and Zeb Wise. Zeb's having a good run. He's up to fifth after starting back in the 10th position. So definitely a lot of movers here in this one. Making sure our lineup is correct, and it is. So the HendrickCars.com pace truck will pull off the racetrack into the infield. We will go green next time by here at Salina High Bank Speedway. Brad Sweet takes the Napa 49 down to the inside for this restart. And we are back underway. Brent Marks, a great restart right there. Stays within a car length of Napa 49 cars. They went back into turn number one. Sweet and Marks run the bottom. Rico tries the top, and it's going to cost him as Brian Brown circled the bottom real nice right there in one and two. He moves into the third spot. The Casey is 21. Now he gets driven around on the outside by Rico Abreu. So Abreu was fourth, and then he was third for about a half a lap there, back in the podium position for Rico. And that would be the first podium of the season if Rico could finish right there right now. That time by 15 in and 15 to go for Brad Sweet. Back in the field, Tyler Courtney and Corey Day going at it right outside of that top 10 position. Courtney runs the bottom eight and Day's on the top. Corey Eliason also making his way towards the front in the car number eight. Casey Kane sideways off of turn number four. Gives up two positions. Tyler Courtney and Justin Peck go, both go by him. Brad Sweet showing the way. Maybe 10 or so car lengths over the 19 of Brent Marks, and traffic is still quite a ways away for the car number 49 of Brad Sweet. Justin Peck and Tyler Courtney side by side down the front straightaway. They are racing for the eighth position. So Tyler Courtney from 20th up to eighth now in car number seven BC. The next car in his sight line is the 18T of Tanner Holmes and the number one A of Jacob Allen. Tyler Courtney underneath the Tanner Holmes down the front straightaway. And Tyler Courtney's got the seventh spot for a moment. Can't make it past him quite yet. Now he knows the head down the back straightaway. Tyler Courtney now up to seventh from 20th. A lot of drivers now migrating to the inside of the racetrack in turns one and two. We'll see what Brad Sweet does now as he has caught some heavy lap traffic. Chase Park and Blake Hahn right in front of him. And Brad Sweet will split between the two of them. Gets by Chase Park. Great move right there from the five-time World of Outlaws champion. Nine laps to go this time by for Brad Sweet. And it looks like Brett Marks has nothing for him here as Sweet is making his way through traffic very easily right now. 
good race going on for this fourth position. Zeb Wise and Brian Brown. And Brian Brown trying to put a move on Zeb Wise right there. It might work out for him. He tapped the brake getting into the corner. They may have made a little contact right there off of turn number two. Here comes the 7BC into the picture as well. Tyler Courtney from 20th and now looking for P6 down the front straight away. Tyler Courtney from way in the back of the field gets by Jacob Allen, gets by Brian Brown, and Tyler Courtney's down into the top five. Tyler Courtney absolutely ripping the lip off of turn number four to get by two cars the last time by the line. Sunshine now working on the 26 of Zeb Wise, and he's going to pass him down the back straight away. It's Tyler Courtney now up to fourth. Zeb says no for now. Slides up in front of him, takes the air off the nose. Tyler Courtney not able to cross underneath him, and Zeb Wise still has fourth down the front stretch. Zeb Wise still with fourth. Courtney now falls back a couple of car lengths to that number 26 machine. Brad Sweet. His lead has grown to a pretty sizable margin right now by over a straightaway over the 19 car of Brent Marks. Four laps to go this time by the line. Now Sweet trying to find a way by the 5T of Ryan Timms and the 9P of Parker Price Miller. Sweet loses a lot of ground that time by off of turn number two, but I don't think Brent Marks is going to be close enough for that to really affect him. Marks trying to get by Spencer Basin, and now now to the inside of the 2KS and Chase Randall to get two cars less between himself and the 49 of Brad Sweet. Car pulling into the infield, the 23 of Garrett Williamson, and I think he hit the tractor tire because the, full, the front end's folded up on the 23 car. White flag next time by for Brad Sweet. Brent Marks has definitely closed the gap, but he's going to need a huge mistake from Brad Sweet here on the final lap if he wants any shot at winning this thing. White flag, one to go for Brad Sweet. Sweet still behind the 5T of Ryan Sims. Brett Marks works to the outside. He's going to need a monster run. It's not going to happen as they work down the... Oh, we got a problem. Car off the pace. The caution's out. It looks like Chase Randall in turn number two. The TKS Motorsports car. I think he might have blown a right rear tire there. I saw a lot of debris. I saw something fly up in the air right here by the flag stand. I was wondering if it was mud, but it was definitely a tire. The 2KS, Chase Randall, there you see some of the debris right there on the front straightaway. And even some landed right here next to the flag stand on the grandstand side of the fence. Chase Randall drawing the caution. This is actually Tony Laporte. This is two nights in a row with a caution on the white flag lap. We're gonna have a green white checkered finish to this one. Kubota High Limit Racing. We know drama. Can you believe it, Chase? Same scenario as last night. Brad Sweet sitting in the catbird seat. I don't even know what a catbird is, but he's leading. He's staring down a victory, his second. And your trend that you pointed out of a driver getting his first win of the season and then immediately doubling up and getting a victory the very next race seemed very likely for Brad Sweet up until that yellow but Brent Marks, he's been so fast all night here. And you've got Rico Abreu, Jacob Allen, Zeb Weiss, Tyler Courtney. This thing is definitely not over. Yeah, I think Brent Marks definitely has a shot here at Brad Sweet. And whatever line Sweet goes to here on the restart into turn number one, expect the 19 of Marks to go to that opposite lane. He was definitely closing in there those last couple of laps, albeit he was in traffic. Both Sweet and Marks were in traffic, so it maybe held up the 49 car a little bit there. But I would be willing to bet that the 19 maybe had similar speed. Here's a replay from the speed shot on the front straightaway. Oh, man. Great shot right there from the guys at Flow Racing to get that on the cameras. Uh, Chase Randall just going down the front stretch, loses the right rear Hoosier, and his night will come to an end. He was running 17th at the time here tonight in his Salina High Bank Speedway debut, Tony. Chase, Brent Marks kicked off the season with a second-place finish at Golden Isles. Then he ran third last night at Southern Oklahoma. He has made two trips to the podium here in 2024, but he is one car length away from his first victory of the season and a $12,000 payday. But Zeb Wise and Tyler Courtney, just a few cars back, have both been gangbusters on restarts here. I don't think anybody inside the top six, seven, or eight here is safe when we come to this restart. Jacob Allen looking good so far in this one as well, Tony. He started back in 12th. He's up into fourth position in car number 1A. Found a home around the bottom. We're going to need the hook to the 2KS of Chase Randall. Uh, that car will not roll anymore 
with that right rear tire gone. So we're waiting on a hook to the number 2KS for Chase Randall before we get back underway. So Brad Sweet leads with what will be a green-white checkered finish, followed by Brent Marks, Rico Abreu, Jacob Allen, Zeb Wise, the top five. 20th to 6th for Tyler Courtney. 7th is Justin Peck. 19th to 8th for Corey Day. Brian Brown in 9th in car number 21, and Corey Eliason is in the 10th position. He started back in 17th. Chris Windham, another big mover here in this one. He started back in what looks to be the 21st position. He is now up to 11th in car number 55. There is Dominic Selzy stopped again on the front straightaway here in turn number one. Selzy having a word with one of the MedStar safety team officials right there. Taking a look at maybe that's a, maybe a seatbelt issue there for Dominic Selzy right there on the left side of that Butler built seat. Tony, is that the case down there? I see you right there in the mix. No, I don't think so, Chase. I leaned in and asked Dominic if it's a seatbelt situation. He shouted something to me about the fuel, so I think he's having a fuel pickup problem possibly. I'm going to check with MedStar here really quick. 10-4, we'll wait for that update there. Tony, as Dominic sells, he looks like he is going to get pushed back to the pit area, and what looked to be a promising run here tonight will come to an end as the 41 car is going to be done for this one. Tony, what's the update? Uh, the only update I have is I spoke to the uh, gentleman from MedStar, one of our first responders here, and he told me that when he got to the side of the 41, Dom told him he felt like there was a fuel leak, and so they got all eyes they could on Dom really quick there. Uh, MedStar took a look inside, didn't see anything noticeable, uh, but Dom has obviously elected to take that car back behind the wall. Getting a good look right now at Chase Randall getting picked up by that uh, truck right there and taken back to his pit area. It was great to have the TKS Motorsports team here tonight with us at Salina High Bank Speedway. He, along with uh, Brian Brown, a couple other drivers that, you know, were supposed to run at the Knoxville Raceway here this weekend and tonight. Uh, that got canceled. They decided to come down here, and uh, it was cool to see them here. And we broke the record for the most 410 sprint cars in one night at Salina High Bank Speedway with 30 cars in the pits here this evening. Brian Brown, uh, Tanner Holmes, he was one of those drivers as well with Chase Randall. So great to have those guys here. It looks like we've got Chase Randall taken off on the hook and he is going to be out of harm's way. I th oh, now we got Garrett Williamson also going to get taken off. We're going green the next time by. Going green next time by, Garrett Williamson will stay in the infield. So a green-white checkered finish to end the Salina High Bank Speedway race here with Kubota High Limit Racing. Can Brent Marks put a move on Brad Sweet here to steal the win on a late race restart? Green flag comes back out. Marks does get a good start. Where does he go into turn number one? Sweet goes to the bottom, and Marks immediately to the top. He gets a good run down the back straightaway. This time by, they'll come to the white, and Brent Marks tries to throw a slider at Brad Sweet for the top spot, comes up short, and Sweet will lead at the white flag. Brent Marks gave it all he had right there, but came up short. A close call for Sweet as he nearly caught the right rear tire of the M&M Painting and Construction number 19. Off of turn number four, Brad Sweet two in a row with Kubota High Limit Racing. Brent Marks second, Rico Avery third, fourth goes to Jacob Allen, and fifth from 21st, Tyler Courtney inside the top five. Wowzers, good stuff there at the end. Brent Marks made it very interesting, tried all he could to get by. The five-time World of Outlaws champion came up just a little bit short on that slider, and he will end up with a second-place result here tonight at the Salina High Bank Speedway.